Okay, so, um, okay, it says we're live, but like people won't actually join for a couple of seconds because of the little delay. So okay. we'll wait until I see some people on here. I also, um, Facebook has been a little funny today. So we'll see, like it keeps kicking me off. <laughs> it always happens in a reboot week. Oh, Dana's here. Hi, Dana. All right, we are, hi, Sherry. We're officially live. Hi, Beth. Hi, Anne. Welcome to our first interview of our May reboot week. It's super exciting. I love these weeks. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Tammy says, hi, Amber. <laughs> So we're going to wait just a couple of seconds for other people to join us. Um, if this is your first reboot week, please let us know in the comments. Uh, we would love to say hello, hello, and welcome you to your first reboot week. Actually, okay, Facebook user from Rochester, Michigan, hello. Sometimes your name doesn't pop up. Hi, Susan. If this is, I actually would love to know what number reboot or boot camp week this is for you. That might be a fun thing to pop into the comments as we wait for everyone to get going. Amber is joining us from beautiful Wyoming, which is one of my favorite states. So, <laughs> um, all right, all right. Hello, 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 everyone. Okay, so let's get started. The thing about Reboot Weeks is we never know where the interviews are going to go, and they're always interesting and always you always learn something new. So I would love to introduce you guys to Amber, and Amber is relatively new to our group. Right, Amber, you joined in? January or February this year. It was a few months ago. This is yeah. my third reboot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so just a couple of months. So Amber, are you, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about your history with clutter and kind of what led you to clutter foundations? And now Amber's also in clutter boss Academy and Amber is also training to become a professional organizer with me. So there's been a lot of stuff in the last couple of months. So do you want to share a little bit of your story with us? Sure. Um, I have struggled with clutter most of my life. My mom was a super strict housekeeper. And so we had to take care of all the chores and she didn't do much of it anyway. But um, I was the oldest of five. So I was the one in charge of making sure not only I got my chores done, but everyone else got theirs done also. And um, so when I moved out of my mother's house, I decided I wasn't going to do what she wanted me to do because it was my house. And so I learned quickly that if nobody does chores, it gets pretty bad pretty quickly. So I started cleaning house. And when I had babies, it's, it's just some of those lessons stuck with me. And I went through my baby clothes as they were growing and stuff like that. But um, when my kids were about eight or nine years old, I decided to leave their father and he was a kind of abusive. And so I, I divorced him a couple years later. I met my soulmate, um, Jimmy, and uh, we married in June of 2000, no, 2019. And just in December, he, he passed away from a liver transplant surgery. And so I was in a pretty dark place when I, when I, found Jess's ad on Facebook. <laughs> um, when we went for his liver transplant, we went to Arizona. We were supposed to stay for a couple of months. And since uh, he didn't make it, I came home early and I was in a really dark place. I didn't do much of anything for the first month. And one day I decided I needed to start cleaning my house because it was a mess. And I found bed bugs in my in my bedroom and that just threw me into a tizzy. <laughs> I remember I, that's when we first met you actually. Yeah, it was kind of what kicked me in the pants and got me going because I I knew uh, I'm going to talk more about that later about the safety issues but um yeah, I was just like I had been a CNA in my past, so I had seen bed bugs before and who knows, maybe I brought them home from work. I don't know. Um, but I knew, uh, I knew I needed to do something and I saw ads, the ad on Facebook and I was like, well, everything else didn't work. So maybe this will. <laughs> and 
uh, I, I have all the skills. I had all the skills in my head already, but this program and Jess has made me see things in a different way and really uh, made it more attainable. It's not something I need to do overnight. And, um, and the community has been just absolutely helpful to me. I don't know what I would do without them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's been a crazy three years, really. Cause I met my husband six months later, we married and then a year and a half later he died. And now here I am <laughs> with all these new big goals and um, some old big goals working all at the same time. So that's it's so, you know, when I listen to your story, Amber, the thing that really strikes me is there's two things in life that really trigger clutter. And that's what I've learned from working with like so many people now. One of them is just transitions. Transitions in general trigger clutter, whatever that transition is. If, if it's getting a divorce, if it's your kids going to college, even if it's changing jobs, right? So any transition in life is going to trigger clutter. And then grief is also another big trigger when it comes to clutter. And so you've had so many transitions and grief to deal with. And I love how, you know, when you first started in, in Clutter Foundations and I learned about, you know, how recent you were dealing with the tragedy of losing your husband, but how every day you were just showing up. Remember you used to do those little videos every day, kind of like, you know, just showing up and saying, this is my real deal and this is what I'm dealing with. And I'm just putting mm -hmm. it out there. I, I think that we don't recognize how impactful that is to other people. So I just want to let you know that you really immediately impacted me just by sharing your story. And I want to say thank you for that publicly in front of everyone. <laughs> but I felt an instant connection to you just in general and um, so just so felt like, man, this is a strong, this is a strong woman who's who's sitting here. So thank you for being so open with all of that in the beginning. Thank you. Lisa says, Amber, you look so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I cut my hair off after my husband died, but <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not doing the long hair thing anymore. <laughs> so Amber also has a lot of um, parts of her history that we have learned over the last couple of months really are helpful to people who are going through decluttering. And one of them, Amber, is that you used to work in the, and I'm going to say it wrong, but you worked for Goodwill in their job training. Well, why don't you just say it? <laughs> I was a job coach for the developmentally disabled folks that, um, that Goodwill helps in Cheyenne. And so my job was to um, sometimes sit with people and hand them things one at a time to help them do their jobs. And other times it was just to oversee what other people were doing. Um, so yeah, I got, I learned a lot about Goodwill when I was working there and uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun work. I got to help people and, and those developmentally disabled folks are really, they're, they're kicking the pants. Sometimes they're just really sweet. <laughs> they're so hilarious. Yeah. So many questions about Goodwill. Is it a good company? What do they take for donations? Like, how you know, how does it help your community? Do you want to talk a little bit to those like kind of common questions that come up all the time? And if you guys have questions for Amber, just drop them into the comments. She can't see the comments, but I can. So I will relate your questions uh, as we go through. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I know that there's some questions about Goodwill, but from being um, a job coach with them and from being uh, um, a customer of Goodwill, I think that in general, they're pretty good company. Um, I know that they do put the money that they earn from the, the stores towards good use. They pay their uh, developmentally disabled folks with it, as well as the people who train them and the regular employees of Goodwill. Um, they offer jobs to people who wouldn't necessarily get them otherwise, um, both developmentally disabled and not. Uh, so um, the money goes to the stores. The money goes to the, the programs that they run. They have a day center for people who can't necessarily work at all. 
So uh, part of my job was to hang out at the day center and entertain and just keep an eye on folks who needed to get get out of the house so their caregivers could work or whatever. Um, I think I think I would rather get stuff from Goodwill and pay a little bit of money for it because sometimes you can find good things there that you wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. As a single mom working as a CNA, I couldn't afford to get my kids really good things. I could go to Walmart and get stuff that would last six months. Or I could go to Goodwill and find something that somebody outgrew and I could pay a fraction of the price for it. So yeah, I would rather take my stuff personally to Goodwill rather than a place that would give it away for free because um, as a CNA, I worked with a lot of people who didn't get anything or, you know, they, they would collect stuff from these free places and just hoard it or disregard it or, you know, they just didn't take care of the things that they got for free as much as they would have without, with, with paying a little bit of money for it. So yeah, that's, you know, that's such an interesting point. Let's just stop here for a second. And this is what I mean. These interviews go in so many different directions, but there is something to be said for paying a little bit for items and then valuing them. And sometimes we, I mean, even if we pay a tiny bit, we, t we tend to overvalue our items, but we also, I mean, the, the, there's like that money and stuff, right? So if we get something for free, we feel like we have to hang on to it because it was free. Uh, but we don't necessarily feel like it's worth something. To, I mean, this is, I guess it depends on the item, kind of just like talking off the cusp here. <laughs> but that's a really good point that when you get stuff for free, you might not take care of it as much because you didn't pay anything for it. So the right. intrinsic value just kind of goes down sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Never really, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's good. It's a good journaling prompt for me later. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That's something my mom taught me. She wouldn't buy me a car when I was a teenager. I had to buy my own car because I would take care of it. <laughs> so, but I saw it myself when I was taking care of people. Um, I took care of people with very little income and uh, they would get all of the free programs and half the time they wouldn't even use the stuff that they got or they would use just a small percentage of the stuff. And um, then they would just leave it trashed around their house for me to pick up later in the week, you know, so it, I don't know. It, it just, um, that's a whole, a whole thing we could talk about. <laughs> well, and, and there's like a side note there too, is that, um, like, so my boot camps used to be free, but when I started charging $27 for them, or actually I've changed the price a couple of times to try and see like what a good number is, but charging you know, at first I tried and charge nine dollars and I, it's been the the price has changed a lot but the point is that charging any amount of money has I think brought people who are more interested in actively working on the program whether it's a hundred dollars or nine dollars the free when when it was free I felt like um there were just people who were, who were just signed up just because it was free. Like I'll just sign up for something for free and not really engage. And the whole, the beautiful thing about this community is just engaging. And that's, so just charging a little bit, it bring it, it, it actually helps our community grow in a more fruitful way because people are somewhat invested. That's part of the reason I showed up every day. I was paying money for this. So I wanted to get my value. <laughs> <laughs> so as somebody who went through donations at Goodwill, so you saw what was coming in, do you have any advice to people who are dropping stuff off for Goodwill? Like what would you say always bring to Goodwill and what would you say like would not be a good thing to bring to Goodwill? Um, well, we saw all kinds of stuff come into Goodwill. Um, I would say definitely take all of your clothes that you don't want to Goodwill, even if they're out of style, um, maybe not the holy ones. And definitely not the dirty underwear and <laughs> holy socks. You can just throw those away. <laughs> Nobody wants to deal with your stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, but even that, <laughs> yeah. um, I believe me, I've, I've dealt with it and worse. So, um, sometimes people would get their bags mixed up and put their garbage bag with their donation stuff. So we, we got some of that. We got some 
pet ashes and and I've heard of other goodwills getting actual um human ashes also because people don't know what to do with them. That was and then, when I was working in people's homes we found it. There were ashes like <laughs> you know, there were lots of ashes, pet ashes, ashes that you had inherited. I had somebody who had like their like father-in-law, their like ex-husband's father-in-law's ashes and she's like I just don't know what to do with these. I mean, yeah. <laughs> ashes ashes are tricky i do uh, my advice if you're dealing with ashes to, is to do like some sort of like ceremonial like scattering of the ashes you do not feel like you have to hang on to them unless that's what you want to do i still have to do that for my my husband's father i never even met i have his ashes though and nobody else wants them <laughs> So, <laughs> so, it's a funny it's a funny thing that a lot of people have in their homes yeah yeah um but uh definitely even if it's like old old outfits that you think are like from their 70s or something they'll use them for halloween time um <clears throat> uh, uh, fancy dresses and uh, things like that are really good because then uh, lower income families can get their hands on some of that nice stuff um even like shoes, as long as they're not like falling apart, they can send the old stuff that they don't want to sell to other places to help them with shoes and clothing and things like that. Um, I'm, they told us, I don't know if it was true or not, but they told us that they would ship this stuff to third world, world countries where they needed clothing. And so that made, that made, that was really cool, I thought. So even if yeah, we couldn't absolutely. sell it. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the comments is saying that scattering is not scattering ashes is not legal everywhere. So make sure you look up your local regulations before you do that. <laughs> like burning stuff is not legal everywhere either. So make sure you know that what you're doing is legal. But I mean, I think the bigger point is that we all have stuff in our houses that we don't know what to do with it. And sometimes it ends up at Goodwill. <laughs> Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff there. <clears throat> we don't get, um, you can't donate a, lo a, lot, a lot of electronics, um, computers and things. Uh, TVs they don't take, but sometimes they'll take radios and small appliances and stuff like that. Yeah, electronics are really hard to, to actually find a good spot to let go of. And I recently came across, I'll post it in the link after this, um, in the comments after this, but uh, an agency that certifies electronics recycling events because sometimes your electronics get recycled and they go right into the trash. Uh, so it's kind of, sometimes it's a scam. So I have, I have a link to share for electronics, but anyway. <laughs> I'm still working on my electronics. So <laughs> I know electronics are so, so, so hard. Do you guys, if you are joining us live right now, do you have any questions about Goodwill before we move on? Because we have another topic to talk to Amber about. Wow. And again, there's a little delay, but um, our next topic, and we'll, we can circle back to Goodwill. Um, Jody says, my neighbor tried donating baby equipment to Goodwill on Saturday and they would not take them. Yeah, a lot of places don't take baby equipment or toys. Amber, do you want to talk about that? Or <laughs> well, I know that they we we didn't take car seats um, or cribs, uh, but we did have toys. Maybe maybe that goodwill was full. I know a lot of people are be decluttering lately from the pandemic, so a lot of these places are getting swamped with stuff. So somebody else is asking, why doesn't Goodwill accept hangers? <laughs> <laughs> Um, because they just end up in the garbage. <laughs> Too many hangers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And somebody else is saying, I heard that Goodwill is not a not-for-profit. I think that that's true. I don't know. All, all I know is that, um, that they do help people. So even if they make a profit off of it, it's a, a decent way for me to get rid of my stuff. Yep. Yeah. So, I, and I mean, I think that that's always a gray area to the not-for-profit profit status. I mean, if people are still benefiting from it, it, I guess it comes down to your own personal, like what you're comfortable with. Are you comfortable with a CEO making a lot of money, but still benefiting the community? Or do you want to work only with not-for-profit? So definitely um, 
these are questions that you want to ask yourself and do a little research. Spend like 20 minutes doing a little research and finding a good charity near you. Uh, there's also um, in the comments, somebody said, oh, I feel bad that I'm not giving to Goodwill now. But the truth is there's a lot of really great charities out there. Goodwill is not the only one that's helping the community. No, so, it's just one. <laughs> just one. There's <laughs> lots of them and, and they all do good things. So. Um, and Juliana just posted a whole thing about false. Goodwill is a for-profit company. True Goodwill Industries of North Central Wisconsin is a registered, reputable 501c3. That means it's not for profit. Um, and there, there's a whole bunch of information. So that's good. We were getting some answers here. Thank you, Juliana, for doing a quick Google search to find out <laughs> the answers here. So we can, and I have a little construction going on in my house. So if you guys hear that, that saw noise in the background, <laughs> that's what that is. Um, okay, Juliana says they pay their CEOs more than other nonprofits, but that's their personal preference. So there you go. Maybe that's where the whole debate about goodwill comes in. Um, anyway, Amber, it was also is also was also is also a home health aide. And I used to be. I'm not certified anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, you learned a lot about decluttering during that whole process. Also, do you want to share some of your insights there? I absolutely did. Um, I was a, a CNA for 20 years, and most of those years I was a home care CNA. So I went to people's homes. Um, a lot of these people had been or... Um, had been disabled for some time or acutely um, fell and broke a hip and couldn't do stuff. So I saw lots of different types of houses. I saw everything from um, clinical hoarders to um, spotless homes. And so I was um, often asked for because I was able to help with cleaning and organizing um, thanks to my mother and my grandmother's uh, training when I was younger. And uh, <clears throat> so um, back in even five years ago, we were more able to do uh, housekeeping and things like that for people. And so part of my job was to make sure that the walkways were clear and that um, the surfaces were sanitized and clean and that uh, uh, to help people figure out how to rearrange their their spaces to accommodate wheelchairs and walkers and things like that and bathrooms I worked in bathrooms a lot because I helped with the uh, showers mostly so um you know I had to really get creative because in the home care setting you don't have all the equipment that you do in the hospital or the nursing home setting so we had to learn how to tuck the shower curtain in so it didn't get the floor wet and things like that and um, teach people how to do a shower without mm -hmm. using up all of their energy. And so that also went on to how to prepare for things. Like if you're going to take a shower, you're going to get all your stuff out and you're going to put it where you can reach it and things like that. So it was a lot of planning. Um, one of the questions we had to address when we went to a person's home um, was about safety. Um, we weren't the only ones doing the safety aspect. The nurses and the therapists were also doing that, but the CNAs were at the homes more often than everybody else. So we were the ones that had to check off that there, there was a clear pathway for them to get to their home or to their bathrooms and to their kitchens. Um, that, that there wasn't going to be things falling on them out of their cupboards. Um, so we would set up places on their countertops for uh, serving uh, the, 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 their food and their, their dishes and things that they needed. So they wouldn't, like if you had a shoulder injury, you don't want to pull heavy dishes out of your cupboards. Um, and in the process, I learned that a lot of these people wanted to keep their houses cleaner and decluttered, but they just hadn't had the energy or the help to do it. And so I would just start washing the dishes. And the next thing you know, we were rearranging the whole kitchen <laughs> and uh, it, it was fun. It was fun for us. It was fun for the, the people who were improving their homes. And it was very, very interesting to watch people 
come out of the depression a little bit. They would see a little movement in the right direction and get a little hopeful. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, keep I mean, so it, that that's what I've observed also working with so many people is that just a little bit of movement in your house can help to lift depression, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Um, but our outer, there's that book, Outer Order, Inner, inner Calm. Outer Order, inner, inner Calm. That's a mouthful. But when your space around you, it feels good, it does actually make you feel better. And I love that that's what you observed also as a CNA. And I'm going to keep muting myself as this saw noise is in the background. <laughs> uh. So um, in my personal life, I noticed I had found bed bugs. So, you know, keeping things de decluttered and clean uh, helps you to uh, notice when you have a leak or if you have other issues going on with your house. Um, it helps you to make sure you don't have mice and things like that. You know, um, mice can be really damaging to people's health. And I don't know how many times I found mouse droppings in people's homes. So I actually just, found like dead bodies, dead mice bodies. <laughs> I have found that before. It, it And here's the thing is that there's no shame when it comes to this stuff. Like if you are dealing with bed bugs, mice, rats, uh, pantry moths, what it, termites, whatever it is, there's no shame. This happens to everyone. But I think that one, you know, the first feeling that we have is shame and it doesn't need to be that way right? at all because we all deal with this sort of stuff at one point or another. We all live on this planet and this planet's covered with all kinds of critters for reasons. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I was a little embarrassed when I found bed bugs in my home because I, I was like, no, I'm not supposed to have bed bugs. But I also knew from my, my history that, um, even the immaculate homes can get bed bugs and other critters. So, you know, it's just all, it's easier to address and to take care of the problems. If you don't have as much clutter, <laughs> you can see it quicker and before it's a bigger problem. And so, um, yeah, you just got to, got to keep up on it. And the maintenance is the thing I struggle with. worst. <laughs> so I'm working on that with the clutter bosses. <laughs> <laughs> what's your best tip for maintenance because i mean it's true once you get decluttered then you know the next well as we go along we try and build in maintenance to every aspect of our program and and i like to say maintenance is progress if you make a little bit of of decluttering progress and then you're able to maintain it that is progress in and of itself so i know amber why don't you share some of your favorite like maintenance hacks that you've been employing well, uh, before I before I found the CBA group, I was part of the Fly Lady system. The Fly Lady system is mostly about uh, maintenance, keeping things clean. Um, and she does address decluttering, but not in the extent that I needed because I had more clutter than probably a lot of her people do. So I took bits and pieces of her program and bits and pieces of other programs to make up my own thing and everybody's thing is different, but I use a bullet journal and this is just, <laughs> <laughs> just my checkoff list. I have a morning and a during the day, afternoon and evening checklist. And when I'm not super depressed and able to keep up with my checklist, it really helps that you can see a difference when I'm doing it and when I'm not doing it. So, you know, just little things like making sure that, the dishwasher's emptied in the morning and the, I start my load of laundry every day and uh, and the 20 minute cleanups. The 20 minute cleanups are, are really helpful to me because I use that 20 minutes to catch up whatever I didn't get done on my checklist. And then um, I use a five or 10 minute or whatever system I'm using that month for decluttering. Uh, I started at my own men's game this this month so i've gotten rid of three things this month and i need to pick another three so the men's game is you you get rid of one thing every day for the the number of days so i don't know you could probably explain that one better well i, well, actually, I, I was thinking um i actually have different men's game strategies in the clutter boss at home program so i have a whole page 
of common variations on the men's game. There's a lot of different ways to do the men's game. But, and I think like the bigger point really, and what Amber is speaking to also is there's no right way to do this. We just come up with a million different strategies and keep figuring out which one works for you. And sometimes something is going to work for you, but then it stops working for you and you need to change your strategy. And I think getting out of that mindset, like there's only one way, you know, there only the Marie Kondo way works or only the, you know, minimalism way works. And that's just ridiculous. We, we have to do what works for us in our circumstances in life and things change all the time. So. Yeah. Whenever I'm, um, I get bored, I get bored. I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, that's, that's something I could do, but I don't want to do it. So then I change it and do something different. I do the box. I was doing the box a day for a while, Marie's box a day, but um, I lost my phone. So now I can't take pictures. <laughs> so when no, I get so my phone back. Not today anymore. <laughs> if nobody, yeah. if I can't prove it, then it's not worth it. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> but I would totally be the same way. I'd be like, oh, if I can't show this to anybody, what's the point in doing it? <laughs> I'll get back to it when I get a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and just a quick shout out to Marie, who is on her 12th month of one box a day decluttering every single day. We're actually going to have a celebration party that Beth is putting together when she hits a year. So that's so pretty huge. Right? <laughs> Marie, you better not lose your phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to open the floor to questions or comments. Beth says I'm addicted to before and after photos. But Amber, do you, anything else that you want to make sure that you say or share or any little tidbits? You are in Clutter Boss Academy, which was like kind of a last minute decision for you. Um, if anybody is listening and wants to hear about Amber's Clutter Boss Academy experience, we can also talk a little bit about that um, as well. So and Amber's training to become a clutter coach. So you're doing all the things. <laughs> I am. I'm doing all the things. And sometimes I'm like, why am I doing so much? But, you know, <laughs> it's all good things. So I could be doing something else. And I'm glad I'm doing this instead. Um, I, I am super happy that I joined Clutter Boss. I, I, I truly believe that God or my higher power or whatever led me to this. Um, and I may sound kind of crazy, but sometimes I hear my husband speaking to me like what he would say if, if he were around still. And on my way home from driving the kids to school, the day after you said was the last day to join that time, I was like, I really wish I had done that. <laughs> Figured something out because at the time I didn't have any money at all. And I was like, okay, I got to talk to Jess and see what we can figure out. And and I was like, no, I shouldn't do it. And then I could hear Jamie saying, come on, do something for yourself. You deserve it. And I was like, okay. So I messaged Jess that day and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And Jess was so sweet and she worked with me and we came up with a great plan. And I, I was so relieved to be able to join the program that I was just in tears for like an hour after that. I couldn't even finish working. I was, I was just like, it was life changing that day was so I appreciate everything you've done for me. Um, hey, but within ready to like show up and do it and you reach out to me, like I will do basically anything I can to make it work because I mean, frankly, you're the type of person I want to work with somebody who is like ready and needs this and is going to like is and look at I mean, Amber, like, oh, my gosh, it's been so like for me to work with you has helped me immensely in my own life. And I, I think that that's like, everyone brings something to the table and it's like, I'm never doing anyone a favor. I'm getting so much from this also from these experiences, because this is what life is. It's interacting with people and, and being on this journey together and learning and growing. And so I was so thrilled when you reached out to me, like I was like, <laughs> All right, this is going to be the crying one. <laughs> <laughs> no crying, no crying. <laughs> anyway, well, I took you off like I always do. So. <laughs> uh, well, the, the other thing that really helped me with that 
first couple weeks, I mean, I hardly remember any of it because I was so far in my grief that I don't remember much of the first part of the year at all. But I do remember that we read the book, How to Be a Badass or something like that. You are a badass. Yep. You are a badass. Yes. And there was a part of that book that said something about purpose and that um, we have purpose, even if bad things happen. And that was like a light switch moment for me. And I knew that even though my husband was gone and that all of the plans and the dreams that we had made for the future were changed, maybe not gone, but changed, that I still had a purpose in this world and that I still had to show up. And if it wasn't for that book at that time, I'm not sure where I would be right now. I'd probably still be very depressed. And I mean, I still have bad days. I'm not saying that I'm healed and over my grief by any means, but I do still have that nugget of hope and knowledge that there's purpose for me still. That's my word for the year. <laughs> so. yes. mm -hmm. That's, that's exactly it. You're hitting the nail on the head. I think that's, Everyone has purpose and everyone, I mean, we are all here. I fully believe we are all here for a reason. And the process of decluttering can really shed so much light on that. That's like, that's it. That's the reason. That's the thing. Yeah, we get unburied from our walls and then we start seeing things that have been there or will show up. Yep. We just mm -hmm. create space for so much more. And it's just, it, it's just incredible. It's, it, it, I am honored to witness this journey that everyone is on. This is like, this is an honor for me. Um, well, I'm happy that you stepped into that because I know that it was a gift for more than just you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a gift for all of us for sure. I do. I think this is my purpose. And I say sometimes like, I cannot believe that I was put on this earth to help people declutter. <laughs> but I, it's like, it's much, it's like part of a bigger picture. I'm like, really, this is how you want me to work with people is through their stuff. Like, <laughs> right. About it sometimes because it's just so, it seems so ridiculous, but it's so, it's this, it's so obvious that this is, what, what, why I'm here. <laughs> oh, hmm. thank you, Sherry. Sherry says I'm even more determined to continue on this journey and see what happens and how far it goes with everyone I have met and for myself. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sherry's come a long way in the short time she's been with us. A long I way. Know. I know. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's amazing to see. It really, really is. I'm happy for her. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> if you guys are new to this um, and you haven't cried yet, you will. Because we have a 100% <laughs> cry rate. And that's, you know, we don't want anyone to ruin that statistic. So feel free to just let it go. <laughs> I think my first sharing, I was bawling. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying, but I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of tears in this process. Happy hmm. tears, sad tears. It's just, it's emotional. And it don't is. let anyone ever tell you that decluttering is not emotional because that is baloney. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lisa's on here. She says she's crying now too. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for Amber? Her wealth of experience in here. We just got a lot of tears coming in the comments. <laughs> oh, man. Um, doo -doo -doo. Happy and sad tears for sure. Yes. Yes, there is a lot of laughter also. And there's somebody is commenting on that. There is a lot of laughter as well. And anything that we can do to make this process, to provide a little levity for this process is huge. because we need that balance in life. Juliana says she might ruin our stat. Juliana, you haven't cried yet. <laughs> we know who we need to target. <laughs> exactly. Just kidding. <laughs> That's one thing I heard a lot in home care though, is people would be just struggling to get into the shower of all things, you know, 
and I would make them laugh about something or they would just laugh about something and we'd laugh about it. And it wasn't very funny. I mean, they were having trouble washing their feet for crying out loud. <laughs> but, you know, if you don't laugh about it, it's just going to make it worse. <laughs> so you got to you got to see that the lighter side of things and not take things so seriously. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Rachel is asking, Amber, what are your big decluttering goals for the year? <laughs> I'm a dreamer. I don't know. We did this uh, Meyer Briggs thing a couple weeks ago with uh, Colleen's group. And um, I don't remember what mine is, IFNP or something like that. And so I tend to make huge goals and then make myself a little bit overwhelmed. But I have options and I have plans. And I'm going to get my whole house and property decluttered by the time I've been in CBA for a year. And I'm also going to start my own business as a, um, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> your big, tell us all your goals. We want to hear the big dreams. <laughs> oh gosh, I have a lot of them. I wrote down the list the other day of all the things that I'm doing and I'm like, holy cow. But um, um, I'm wanting to get my, my fan finances figured out and I want to finish training my dogs. I want to write my book. <laughs> I love that one. That's my favorite one. <laughs> Eventually I want to open a retreat in Wyoming where people can come and, and relax church groups, um, CBA groups. Um, know, that's our future. We have a, a yes, we're going to be going to Amber's retreat center with the, with our clutter bosses. When it happens, we have to, we're manifesting this into reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, it's a big thing and it's going to, I don't even know how it's going to happen yet, but other things crazier have happened. So <laughs> I'm sure it will. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a mentorship at work. I started this giant garden. I was going to do just a little garden, but my brother and I got together and our dreams blew up and now we have a huge garden. <laughs> so it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are my big dreams. It's important to dream big. I really think it gets you closer to your goals. If you can set a ginormous goal like that, that's totally what I do also. Lisa says, Amber, how often do you reevaluate your decluttering plan? Every day. <laughs> daily. Daily is the answer, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I made up a, an Amy's list when I first started, which really helped because I was just looking at my space. At first, I was just going around picking stuff up around my house that I knew I didn't want. And then I started getting stuck because I was hitting some of my husband's stuff that I haven't even started with yet. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I started making a list that we call the Amy's list, which is we just go through and map out an entire space like every dresser drawer and whatever. So I started doing the Amy list in my bathrooms, in my closets. And then I kind of stalled because um, I had a couple of memorial services and that kind of took precedence. But I'm on my kitchen with my Amy list and that's where I'm going next. <laughs> Um, the um, Amy is also covered in the Clutter Boss at Home program. So just another plug for that. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa says, I love your answer right now. I feel like I'm going hour by hour. Lisa, minute by minute, second by second, it doesn't matter. Re I think the key is to just keep moving forward. If you have to reevaluate and change, no problem. It's when you don't like, when you don't recognize that it's time for a reevaluation and then you get stuck. That's where like the problems start to happen, right? So if you can just like observe, and then say, okay, this isn't working. Even if it's every hour, that's okay. That's like, that's where you're at. And that's fine. I think that you told me once when I, I made some comment when I first started, that the only way to fail at this is to stop. And mm -hmm. that was really helpful to me because I was like, you know what? She's right. All I have to do is change what I'm doing as long as I'm making progress. Yep. The only way to fail is to stop. And the only person who can stop you from moving forward is yourself. Like you are the, your own worst enemy. And that goes for all of us, me, everyone. Like we, we are our own worst enemies. The only, the only person who can actually stand in your way is you. That's just how it goes. 
even if you have to do a tiny little thing every day. I mean, I've been grieving. So, you know, some days I just can't do much and some days I don't do anything. But I gave myself grace and say, you know what? I got a lot going on and I deserve a day off. So I'm going to take this day off and tomorrow I'll reevaluate and check my checklist and see what I can get done. Absolutely. And some days getting out of bed is the hardest thing that you're going to do that day, but you did it. And we celebrate that because that's hugely important. Like yeah. you got out of bed and, and some days you don't get out of bed, but you reach out and say, I'm having a hard time getting out of bed. And that's the, like, that's okay. That's, that's a step forward. So wherever you're at, this group meets you period, because mm -hmm. it's crazy life right now. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> um, Amber, any last comments before we wrap up? This has been such an incredible and fun and inspiring and tearful <laughs> interview. <laughs> oh, I'm just happy that I'm here and, and I'm willing to help anybody who has questions. If you have anything, feel free to friend me or message me, whatever you need to do on Facebook. Um, I'm here for you. Thank you so, so, so much. We are all here for you. And yes, Sherry says this has been awesome. I agree. This has been awesome. Um, we are giving away a prize at the end of this reboot week. It's going to be, I'm starting a new little thing called Clutter Boss Jumpstart. And it's going to be the first month of Clutter Boss Academy. But you can also do the jumpstart independent of Clutter Boss Academy. You don't have to join. Um, so it's one month. Basically, there's eight, there's going to be eight. It's like a continuing education model. So there's going to be eight calls. There's going to be a curriculum, like a syllabus that you follow. So we're giving away one, one entry, one spot in Clutter Boss Jumpstart. If you are interested in that, make sure you drop me an email and let me know so I can enter you into the drawing. It's just at prioritizeyoursanity.com. And Amber, thank you so, so much for sharing your soul with us today. We are so honored to be here with you and so grateful for this friendship. I'm personally so grateful for this friendship. I can't wait to meet you in person one day <laughs> and just give you a big giant hug. That's oh, yes. <laughs> that's the one thing this play, this whole program is missing is the actual hugs. <laughs> I know. We need the real hugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> one day we're going to make that happen. And then we're going to be at your retreat center in Wyoming whenever that happens. We'll be the CPA. <laughs> retreat center for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Everyone is saying it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> and the replay is available in the group. This is also going to be posted into your membership site. So if you have any questions or if you're watching this on replay and you have questions for Amber, just tag her and she will see them and answer them. So thank you guys so much. Amber, have a great rest of your day. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Bye, guys.